Now, two weeks after former Niger Delta agitator Mujahid Asarito Kubo's visit to the presidential villa in Abuja, the ripples of the events that followed are yet to settle. There are missed reactions to statements by Asarito Kubo claiming that the military is behind the endless oil theft going on in the country. There, then, in reaction to what appeared to be an ethnic twist to the development, a video where the former agitator openly displayed sophisticated firearms with underlying threats went viral. And now, the Human Rights Association of Nigeria, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, wants the former militant leader arrested for unlawful possession of assault rifles and threat to lives of the people from a section of the country. In a statement signed by the coordinator of the association, Emmanuel Omubiko, the association gave the federal government 72 hours to arrest Mr. Dokubo or they will mobilize for a nationwide protest. In urging the state, the Department of State Services to apprehend the former militant, the group alleged that Azari Dokubo may be linked to the unknown gunmen that have been wreaking havoc in the eastern part of the country. The association concluded by saying that the illegality must not be allowed to continue while the security agencies pretend not to know or willfully not take action. To discuss this further, we are now being joined by security analyst Chidi Omeje. Mr. Chidi Omeje, thank you very much for giving us your time. Let's begin with your thoughts on Asari Dokubo's comments and then the call for his arrest over allegation of possession of firearms. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I, I saw the video, the video clip, the man shared, where he was uh, you know, brandishing a sword rifle, weapon, uh, a military grade weapon, you know, and uh, making threats uh, to a threat on the, uh, on, on the particular ethnic group, the Igbos. Um, you know, is uh, is the that particular? This is not the first time the man has done this. We have seen videos of him, you know, you know, going on parade with uh, military grade weapons and uh, with his followers, all manner of uh, assault rifles. Um, you know, let me tell you something about this this law. You know, uh, uh, law on weapons. As far back as uh, May twenty second, uh, twenty nineteen, President Buhari. You know, signed an executive order to remove, revoke, and banish all firearms uh, certificates and licenses throughout Nigeria. So, right now, as we know it, legally, the only person that can give license for anyone to, to own military grade weapons in Nigeria is the commander in chief, the president. So, the, it, uh, and that, that is a, in accordance with the Firearms Act, Section 33, which empowers the president to grant licenses for military grade weapons. So, seeing a non state actor, brandishing military grade weapons making threats against ethnic nation uh, to me is has gone beyond uh, you know play and i think that the government must rein in on this character this you know vi uh, violent merchant uh, that he does not uh, he cannot be lawless and if he's not if and i agree with the group that uh, if the government are not prepared to to rein in on him, then they, 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 they should be prepared to see the consequence. Uh, but there, there, there are those who are also non militant, you know, fellow fellow to threaten the group, uh, ethnic, ethnic nation, and everybody kept quiet. It, it's incredible. Uh, okay. Granted, the, the comments are being described as irresponsible, but then again, there are those who are skeptical. They are saying that this is not a recent video. This is a video that he did sometime in 2022. Does it concern you that the video is coming out at this time and then the statement is coming out at this time? One would wonder, why did the group not make the statement as at the time that the, um, the video was made by Sarido Kubo? Do you think that there is a connection with his recent appearance at the presidential villa? I think that the connection, I think the, the man deliberately released this video again, you know, uh, as a reaction to the response uh, uh, to, you know, you know, when he, when he, when he mounted the, the presidential platform to accuse the military of uh, being part of uh, oil theft, he equally made some, some uh, remarks about the IPOP uh, leader, Enam Dikano. And then, of course, I, I understood that uh, the IPOP guys give people, uh, you know, a response to him. And so I think he released this particular video. I, I, as a some kind of threat, you know, to them to say, look, 
I'm equal to the task, and I'm here, here are my weapons. So I, um, you cannot blame the group, the uh, Horewa guys, who, uh, who are responding. Probably they're, they're just seeing, uh, for me, I'm just seeing a particular video now. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure it's actually an old video, but even if it's an old video, it was released recently, and people begin to see it, and of course, it was on that basis that Horewa guys are responding to him. So it doesn't really matter when it was done. The important thing is that we are seeing a no-state actor brandishing military-grade weapons in a country that have a law against such things. So why is law protecting him? That's the important thing. That is not a question of winning. All right, I want to take your is, thoughts quickly on. Right. I want to take your thoughts quickly on a part of the statement by Huriwa. Uh, they said, and I quote, illegality must not be allowed to continue while as the security agencies pretend not to know or willfully not take action. End of quote. Is it your thoughts that they are pretending not to see? If yes. How can security agencies redeem themselves? And if no, what response, if any, do you expect from them in the coming days? Again, I support, again, I, I can understand where the group is coming from. Because you cannot tell me that the, military, the, the, the security agencies are not seeing all these things. Are you telling me that this, the DSS, the Nigerian police, or the, even the military are not seeing the, the clear contravention of arms law by that, by that, by that character? So you see, there is, is, a, is a clear, you know, stop that this man uh, is above the law, and, and that the, the, the state security apparatus have seen him, and then they're aware of what uh, you know his antecedents. Look at him, brandishing damnator, and everybody's seen him, and nobody is trying to do anything about it. So I do not think that the, the group have said anything that is wrong. I support them, and I agree with them because that, uh, I agree with them because uh, it's in a country where. Uh, law and order rooms, this kind of thing cannot happen, and then you know, it will start impunity. So, the impunity right. is too much. I think that the security agencies ought to rein in on him right now. Yeah, they, 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 have to, they have to go after him so that you know, um, you know, we 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 we, we convinced indeed that this country is a country of law and order, you know, in, as a matter of fact. All right, Mr. Major, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your time with us in Nigeria tonight. Thank you for having me, I appreciate the opportunity.